While most automotive designers of the era were focused on creating slippery body shapes in order to cheat wind resistance, 22-year-old German-born engineer Michael May believed there was great potential to harness the air flowing around the car to channel horsepower to the ground more effectively, simultaneously improving handling characteristics in corners and adding stability at speed. And although Michael May's experimental wing was proven to be four seconds faster than the Porsche factory's own brand new 550A, event organizers protested against Michael and Pierre May's 550, citing the wing obstructed the view of the cars behind it. They were forced to remove the wing, losing their competitive advantage against the 550A models. But the concepts behind the unusual wing had been proven effective. In the 1959 Targa Florio, 3718 RSKs not only survived 10 laps of the punishing 44-mile circuit, they managed to take first, second, and third place finishes ahead of more powerful competitors. The RS60 and RS61 became the ultimate evolution of the Spider program. These cars, which were still known as the Type 718, had a tubular space frame that was similar to the 1959 RSK but they utilized a wheelbase that was four inches longer and featured a revised rear suspension that had been implemented in the 1959 works RSKs. While similar in appearance and equipment, these cars were noticeably different from previous Porsche 718 Spiders due to tightening FIA regulations, with the most visible of these changes being the installation of a larger windscreen, an increase in cockpit size, and space for the FIA-required suitcase while other marks added even more horsepower in an attempt to gain an edge, and anticipated Porsche would do the same. The RS60's powertrain remained largely unchanged. The 4-inch addition to its wheelbase made for drastically improved handling and an increase in legroom. Its success in competition around the world only bolstered the Spider program's well-earned nickname as the Giant Killers. Wow. I mean, we get to do some cool stuff, but that was pretty legendary today. Yeah, very, very special. And taking the opportunity to share a couple, you know, kind of the beginning of, of Porsche racing. Yeah. Of course, they had success with the early 356s in the, you know, late 40s, early 50s, and knew they had to develop something to be more competitive. And along came aluminum spiders. But these are really represent bookends, the beginning of the 550 Porsche's competition, whole competition life with the RS. A spider right. and then the evolution, the end of the bookend, the RS60, RS61. This is, of course, chassis 31, known as the wing spider. But before it became the wing spider, it was driven by a gentleman named Von Franklinberg, who set uh, six world speed records right out of the box when it was delivered new in France in the 1.5 liter class. And as we were driving today, and we drove significant miles, it just dawned on me, just driving, the pure driving enjoyment, the the visceral feeling of everything, the sounds, the noises, uh, the analog experience, just how planted this car is with the wing. You know, once you go over 70 miles an hour, this car just hunkers down. There's no uh, overdriving characteristics. Um, you know, basically, as we both know, the ladder frame spiders, they're, you're gonna slide the car around with the throttle. You can often drive these cars, steer these cars with the throttle just because of the oversteer characteristics of how they drive. And this car, uh, playing with the throttle for the wing, which undulates about three and a half inches, uh, when we were going into corner state, this thing really feels planted. It actually works? It actually works. And you know, remember, this is the car that Porsche protested in Nürburgring against Michael May and his cousin because it was four seconds faster than the new 550A model. And uh, at their home track, at their home race, uh, this ad hoc uh, engineer and his cousin are beating the Porsche factory drivers with the new 550A with this car because it's four seconds faster. All of this has resonated in my brain today. And the fact that these cars are so well prepared, both these cars are pretty well known in the spider community, yep. but it, it refutes this, uh, the hype that these cars are not usable. And we've proven this with our European tours. Last year we did a thousand miles with four cam cars. Of course, we do the four cam jam that celebrates mm -hmm. Ernst Furman's engine. Yep. But when these cars are maintained the right way, when the engines are built the right way, these are very approachable, very usable cars. What we see happening in the collecting world is we walk into so many collections that have new GT cars. 
uh, GT3 RSs and every paint to sample thing. And we, what, we, uh, what we see in some instances with younger collectors is this, I need a, a, an experiential car that punches experiential tickets, whether it be, this car ran Classic Le Mans last year, this car was shown at Pebble and uh, was in second place uh, some years ago. So you can go do classic racing, classic rallies, concourse, but these are cars and coffee cars as well. I mean, it's not absurd. Everyone thought we were nuts when we drove a thousand miles in Europe uh, with these cars and the, the way that we use them. Yeah. But uh, it's usability. And again, uh, mortality is a real thing. It's how, like, what do you want to squeeze out of life? The, the amount of feedback you get when you're driving these cars, it, it's, it's yeah. you know, those of you who own one of these aluminum spiders, congratulations. <laughs> um, if anybody ever asks you to go drive their, you know, Porsche 550, an RSK, whatever it might be, go drive it because it is about that experience. Um, you know, and we think about the beginning, right, with the 550 through the evolution um, to the RS60, 61. They made 90 of these. Chassis 90 is probably the most original known on the planet. Yes. Also a very well known Spider. Um, they made half as many 550As, fewer RSKs. They only made 17 RS60s. That's right. Right? And four of those were kept by the works team. Yep. To campaign and 13 went into the to the privateer market six of which this is one of them 718060 a coincidence that the VIN number is the same as the model which is just cool um, so is cool. yeah one of the six delivered to the United States and probably the most original RS60 known yeah um, of those 17 produced cars how many are left we don't even know how many are in the states we don't know but this car as it was campaign delivered new to a Volkswagen dealership and a Porsche dealer in Wisconsin new to think that it survived history. You know, in this state and in history, it's and, history and with yeah. its provenance and you know still has its original motor it's just you know built by Billy Doyle by the way yeah. rest in peace um, yeah one of the he, best he, he, guys in history yeah, of, if you ever had the honor to get to know Billy he was a great guy and certainly drive one of his engines yeah he was a great guy really a magician so and that, you know, that's the thing, we, we get asked, because it, uh, it's no secret, we love these cars and we uh, consume them fairly often. We either restore them, rebuild the engines, or right. sell them. It's hard to find, it's near impossible. The, the percentage of original body cars with their original engines is a very, very, very small number. And uh, cars like these that have documented provenances, no missing links in their history files, you know, yeah. there's not a decade missing yeah. uh, on either of these cars. It, it, it's just rare error, mm -hmm. and among rare error in terms of production numbers. And driving these historical cars today, though, it's just, uh, it is. It, it's like savoring an unbelievable glass of scotch, whiskey, or wine. It's just a moment to really feel alive and be in the moment. And in today's world, I can't think of anything more pertinent. <laughs>